would you be able to look up a bit uh the entire head just angle it upward uh -huh. okay can you stick your tongue out more of it say ah uh. uh -huh. is just rest it over here. I'm just going to take the baseline of your coals. This is a sublingual thermometer. It has a disposable sheath so that it can so you just take this under your tongue. Mm -hmm. And you said there hasn't been any fever with a cough. Come in. Yes. Hi there. Hello, Haraya. Hi, my name is Nurse Haraya. Nice to meet you. Hello. Thank you so much for coming in. So, um, that you're coming in here for a um, of concerns about your cough. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, you've come to the right place. Thank you. So, um, before we begin, uh, may I ask you for your name and uh, date of birth? My name is Therese. 
Mm -hmm. And my date of birth is June 14th. Thank you so much for coming in, Therese. Um, would you be able to tell me what month it is today? It is December. Okay, and the year? 2022. Okay, December 2022. Perfect. Okay. Um, Alright, so thank you so much for um, that information. I just need to verify your file, make sure I'm talking to the right person. Mm -hmm. And so, um, tell me what brings you here today. Um, I have this cough that, um, doesn't seem to disappear, so I might be coughing it through our, through our assessment here, Nurse Araya. Um, um, and I feel it, like, in my throat, but also in my lungs, and it's very, uh, I feel like a discomfort with it. Um, and then it takes, uh, affects my voice as well. Um, so, um, but there's no phlegm, there's no blood, um, no mucus, it's just a dry hacking cough. Sounds like you've had this for a while. So, um, how this uh, medical exam will take place is I'm going to first begin by asking you a series of questions just to get a better understanding of the nature of this cough, which you seem to be very well. Um, you sound like you understand its nature very well because it sounds like it's been there for a while. And after I ask a certain uh, questions just to get a better understanding of the cough I will I may perform some medical exams that would involve taking a look into your mouth uh, shining a light so I could see the throat area and also feeling around um, your face neck uh, upper chest and arms for what are called lymph nodes and then um, I may ask you to change into a gown so that I could have a listen with a stethoscope into your lungs to see how they're sounding like. Is that, how does that sound? Is that okay? Yes, it sounds fine. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the series of questions. So what you mentioned is that this cough, originates from the throat but also travels to the lungs affecting both the lungs and the voice and there doesn't seem to be any kind of it, it's dry so it's it's not a productive cough it's putum or blood that's really good to know um okay so um tell me about um so you mentioned on the throat would you be able to point at it exactly it's right about here okay and i sometimes feel like there's something in there like i can't sometimes swallow okay it feels like there's something in there mm -hmm. but no pain so it's also affecting your swallowing yes especially when i eat something okay when did this begin? Um, I've been having it for quite a number of months, on and off, but lately it's become more prevalent, more, um, I have it more often now than I did even a few months ago, like during the summer, it was, it was, I was thinking it was disappearing. Now it's back again, so I don't know what's going on. That's why I'm I'm here. That's why you're here. We're here to figure it out. Um, so it sounds like it's been going on for months, as you said, like since the summer, and it has showed up. It's kind of gone away a little, and now it's come back even worse than when it started. Yes. Yeah. 
okay so would you say it started in the spring or in this in the winter because it was before summer right yes um i had it pretty much it started last winter okay last winter mm -hmm. so but, yeah sorry oh and then what happened was it disappeared um and then as i said it's it's progressed to where we are now so last winter would you say about a year ago almost mm, roughly yes okay so it could have started around january february yes, march yes yes with it with our winter so okay was there anything that occurred during that time did you get sick or did you move to a place that had more dust or work environment for mm, example i'm just thinking it could be um perhaps work environment okay um because i was it was a new job mm -hmm. and um i had to move things around there mm -hmm. um from the previous employee um okay. so i thought maybe that was what started it mm -hmm. um but i've never had any kind of asthma or you know like breathing issues before mm -hmm. um so this is very surprising to me mm -hmm. and um yeah so i don't know nurse what what this all what it is but the, it's it's progressed that's what i'm saying okay so it sounds like we can pinpoint it to the time when you uh, started this new job and you started moving things that are were they dusty they were dusty okay. yes uh, was it an old building which could have some mold mm. or like perhaps a, but yeah it's an industrial building um like with the like a, i won't say a basement but like a lower level okay um okay. and that particular lower level um i like didn't have the best ventilation i see I see. So it sounds like um, it's an environmental factor as opposed to like a viral or a bacterial that did you get sick at the time? Um, not you know, like where I was, uh, I did uh, miss work. It was not something that affected my work. Um, it was just something where, um, and at the time, you know, we were wearing masks at the time. Okay. Um, and I thought maybe it was an allergy to the masks, but no, um, uh, it didn't get worse, but it didn't get better until around the summertime and then it disappeared. Okay. And then now in the last, I'd say a couple of weeks, it's come back again. I see, I, and I can kind of hear a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay, so there could be a lot of things. So did you mention that you did kind of get a cold, but it's not something to kind of like knock you out mm -hmm. and stay at home? Yeah, no, nothing, nothing major. Um, I got a bit of a cold on, in September. Okay. But um, it didn't, again, that cold wasn't, um, like, it, it, it was only for a couple of weeks that I had it, and then it went away. Um, but still, this issue, the dry hacking cough, is still here. It didn't disappear with the cold. I see. I see. So, um, did it come on quite suddenly? Like, is it like a few days or even a few hours of entering the building and starting to move the stuff around? Oh, or did it take some time to show up? Um, yeah, it took about uh, at least a couple of weeks, I think. A couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. it sounds like there was a lot of things being moved. Yes. It took several days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really important to know because it helps us prevent um, environments as such that can aggravate the situation or make it worse. Right. So thank you for telling me about that. Um, so we know that it's been going on and off. It started in the winter, it disappeared, and now it's coming back. Um, and it also sounds like it's starting to affect other parts of the body, like the lungs, you say. So in the beginning, was it just like a kind of like an itchy throat? And then, Dry, yes. Yeah. Yes, itchy a little bit. Um, but like now, we, now it, it's progressed, as I said, to where... 
I feel that if I'm lying down, um, you know, going to bed, I'll cough when I'm lying down, or like I said, um, eating. when I'm eating, um, it's just almost as if some, the food gets stuck, and it's hard for me to swallow. So I have to like eat very slowly. Mm. So when you're laying down, does it cause you to have difficulty breathing? Like it's not. Okay. Not breathing, but it's the cough, like it'll, the it's the dry hacking. Yes, so it comes. Like brought on by yes. the change of position. Yes, laying down. exactly. Okay. And also, does the temperature of the food or the type of food change? The um... yes, I I can't drink hot fluids. Like, I mean, I'm not a coffee drinker per se, um, but like, you know, if I have something like hot tea, even. Or, um, I love hot chocolate, anything like that. I can't. I have to be really careful. Otherwise, I, I actually, you know, sputter, <laughs> if that's the right word of, you know, I can't swallow the liquid down my throat. So the hot is worse than the cold? Yes. I don't have an issue with cold. Okay. Does the cold make it feel better? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's important to visit it certain types of cold drinks or any cold any cold drink but especially water okay so better with cold water <laughs> okay so right now from zero to ten if you have to rate this cough from zero being you know absolutely okay before the cough arrived and then ten being like the worst cough in your life, where mm. would it sit? I'd have to say about a seven, eight, just okay. because of the duration, the length that I've had it for. Okay. And during the attacks, the coughs, uh, spasms, or attacks, mm. uh, what number would that go up to? Mm. I'd have to say, yeah, I'd have to say 10. Okay. I'm not sure if you said this already, but did you mention there's any pain associated with it? Um, no pain, but just the discomfort. You know, like when you're coughing, cough, like hacking coughing, mm -hmm. how that makes you feel. Because sometimes I just coughing, 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 and then all of, all of a sudden it stops, and then I'm okay. How long will the attacks last for? Sometimes just a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it can be up to, say, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay. So 10 to 20 seconds. Of that duration, but then I'll stop and then again, it'll be repetitive. I for like maybe two minutes, three minutes sometimes. I can see how that can be very... Um, uncomfortable <laughs> is there anything else that you wanted to say regarding the cough that we didn't cover um no other i think i mentioned it's not painful yeah it's just uncomfortable mm -hmm. and dry that's what it is and i don't feel pain in my in um like terrible achingness or anything in my lungs from coughing i don't have that but i can feel as if it's like just it's like gone from my throat down almost into my lungs like that's how it feels to me now it's hard to explain but it's kind of that level of i guess progression if that's the word of how i feel so it sounds like it's going deeper into the lungs, and and how does that affect your life? Um, you know, it just it's it's, it's very um to the point of annoyance, I guess you could say. Um, you know, because I'm talking to someone, or um, even now talking to you, like I'm trying, I'm suppressing, trying to suppress the cough. You can see it's it's come out. It's <laughs> Um, so I have to really talk very slowly, um, to 
to sort of control um, my voice mm-hmm. or if I'm talking to my colleagues or anybody um, all of a sudden I'll just start coughing so, so it sounds like you have to be really conscious about how it affects others yes and you have to try to control them so that it doesn't just come out yeah, because, you know, if you start coughing in public, you know what people think. Not nowadays, right? It's a crime. Right. <laughs> it's a crime to be sick. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I know you mentioned that there is... Oh, here we go. I hear it. Uh, it's actually good for me to hear it so I can understand the nature of it. Um, it does sound like it's coming from the lungs and trying to come out. And... And you mentioned no allergies before. Mm -hmm. Any known allergy? No. Any, um, uh, okay, so anyone in the family who had a kind of a a respiratory issue? Mm, Two of my cousins, my maternal cousins on my mom's side. Mm -hmm. Um, I know one of them needed a buffer. Okay. The other one, I don't know if she needed a buffer or not. Is it because of asthma? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, asthma. So it started from a young age? Anyone yes. Anyone with COPD, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that developed later on, usually as a result of smoking or uh, living in um, low air quality environments, like people who live in urban areas over time, they tend to it's it's kind of like smoking over time because mm-hmm. they inhale a lot of the fumes mm-hmm. from the cars. Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. No, Soraya, no, not that I'm aware of. And uh, and your work environment, other than the dust, uh, doesn't uh, expose you to um, things like asbestos and fine um, particles. Um, like it just like- it's just an older building, so I don't okay. know. One hundred percent, and now I'm not there anymore. So, okay, yet it still persists. Yes. Okay, so it started there. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of come with you. Yes. Okay, so, all right, and any history of smoking? No, but my dad smoked for many years, and my uncle did as well. Some family members. Um, but I never smoked. But did they smoke inside as you were growing up? Yes. And you were inhaling the... the my second. dad for a little while, um, and then he started to smoke outside. And during that time, do you remember being affected by the smoke? Would you be coughing or mm, feeling I don't, to breathe? I don't remember coughing. I just remember not liking the smell. Okay. Okay. There's also certain medications that could um, create a cough, uh, but we can go over that later. Mm. Okay, so good. So thank you so much for answering the questions, Teresa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope we'll be able to help you and find out. Um, it sounds like already we have some understanding of what caused it, what makes it better, what makes it worse. So. I think um, the goal would be not to make it worse and to, of course, uh, allow it to heal completely so that you can resume um, your normal day-to-day life without the annoyance of this of this cough. Okay, so that concludes the uh, the in- interview portion. Um, now going to move on to the second portion, which is um, the medical exam. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to put this down and take my equipment. So the medical portion has two parts. Uh, one that requires uh, the first part is just me um, taking a look at, as I said, the the throat, the mouth, and then the second part is, so that's called a nose and throat exam, because we're looking at the nose, the throat area. And then the second part 
is going to be a full respiratory assessment with a listening of the lungs, asking you to breathe and say certain words, which I'm going to ask you to wear a gown so that I can have access to um, the post, the back side of the lungs and be able to listen to them. Is that okay? Yes. Perfect, hey, Jerry. So before we um, do the physical examination, I'm just going to make sure that I sanitize my hands. So before we begin the respiratory exam, which is going to take two parts, the first part is taking a look into your nose and your throat area by asking you to say, ah, I need to shine a light and also feeling for the lymph nodes on your neck, face and shoulder and arm area. That's the first part. And then the second part is going to require you to change into the gown and for me to listen to your your lungs. Um, before we do that, I'm going to take your vital signs, which is going to involve me taking your blood pressure, um, taking a look at your respirations, and counting your pulse. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yes. Okay. It's fine. I, okay, perfect. I know it's a lot of things. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you're okay with all of that. first so mm -hmm. that way we can get the pulse before we take the blood pressure Okay, good. So your pulse and your breathing is within the normal. We're going to take your blood pressure. Would you like me to remove? Uh, that would be helpful, yes. rest the over here. I'm just going to take the baseline of your pulse, uh, your blood pressure. So 
Okay. Would you be able to lift the same arm and squeeze it 10 times? Pardon me, squeeze your hand 10 times. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now I'm just going to have a listen to pulse this time. Just going to rest your arm here. Blood pressure is 90 over 60. Do you usually have a lower blood pressure? Mm. Uh, I can't say I don't know what it is. It feels a bit tired. Okay. So maybe I don't know if that would relate to this or not. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Sometimes when we're dehydrated as well, that could happen. Uh, so. Okay, so we've done the blood pressure, and I'm gonna also take a look at the temperature. I don't have a. They have those gun ones nowadays. Mm -hmm. We have a. This is a sublingual thermometer. It has a disposable sheath so that we can. So you just stick this under your tongue. Mm -hmm. And you said there hasn't been any fever with a cough. All right, 36 on the dot, which means you're a-okay. -okay. That's good. Okay, so, so we know it's not an infection. It's more like an irritation. Okay, so we've done your vital signs. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at your... Um, the So we're going to use an otoscope, which is something that's used to look into the ears, but it can also be used to take a look into the nose. And... So, if you're able to say ah, I'm just gonna take a look at your tonsils. Ah. Would you be able to stick your tongue out and say ah? Ah. Would you be able to look up a bit, uh, the entire head, just angle it upwards? Ah. Okay, can you stick your tongue out more a bit? Say ah. ah. Okay, good. If you can close them, doesn't seem to be any problem over there. 
Okay, so was that uncomfortable at all? Just saying, ah. Uh, Causes the cough to cough. be triggered. Yes. Okay. Um, would you be able to swallow uh, some water? Yes. Would that? I have some water here. Yep. I got some water over there. My flask right now. Yes. Is that the Make it feel better, or it makes me feel better. Yes. Okay, it's a colder. It's, it's the cold water. Yes. Okay, good. So, and I'm just going to go in with my speculum and just there you go. I could, I don't see any nasal polyps or any discharge, um, but there is some um, redness, which is normal with vascularity. So, do you have any um, nasal drip or? Be sometimes runny nose. Sometimes. I'm just palpating one side at a time as not to compress the carotid artery. While I'm here, I'm also going to palpate the thyroid. Moving on the side. So here you can actually palpate. You could see you could feel your thyroid. And shine a light into the thyroid would you be and underneath the eyes here, just the maxillary, is this uncomfortable at all? No. Okay. So first I'm just going to listen with just your normal breathing. Okay, can you take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth? So each time I move the stethoscope, thank you. 